Uh, good afternoon and welcome you all uh, for this uh, session on uh, preventing computer frauds and uh, cyber crimes uh, as part of the Cyber uh, Jagrupta Divas. So we welcome you all. Uh, before uh, starting the session, uh, actual session, let me give a brief introduction like why uh, we are doing this Cyber Jagrupta Divas. Okay. Once again, uh, we welcome all the you know participants, uh, officers, and uh, our uh, uh, today's uh, uh, eminent ex uh, uh, expert for organizing this session, uh, sir, and welcome you all for this session. So let me give a brief introduction uh, about uh, this uh, session. So as we all know, like uh, every month, first Wednesday, we are uh, observing this uh, Cyber Jagrutta Divas so for all the uh, ministries and uh, you know, for all the uh, for, for all the uh, all the ministries, you know, all the ministries and. Uh, they're attached organizations kind of thing. Uh, they're attached organizations and all. So uh, why are we doing uh, these uh, things, you know? Uh, as we all know, there was a lot of increment in terms of uh, cyber uh, uh, number of cyber crimes are increasing day by day. When the technology is moving and the cyber crimes are also moving uh, and the cyber crime number is also increasing like anything. So keeping that in mind, uh, our Ministry of Home Affairs suggested to observe the Cyber Jagrutta Divas, uh, you know, all the ministries and in their advanced offices to increase the cyber hygiene practices so as part of their professional as well as, uh, you know, personal life. So cyber hygiene has become more important on account of ever-changing scenarios in the cyber uh, space uh, clubbed with the technological advancements. Uh, technological advancement, uh, advancements. As I told you, the technology is uh, moving as well as uh, the, the number of cyber crimes are also increasing like anything. And uh, we, uh, this we are observing uh, as, you know, uh, uh, directed by the Ministry of Home Affairs uh, to observe this uh, Cyber Jagratha Divas and all the ministries and adult organizations. So this session is, uh, you know, uh, uh, organized by the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology Government of India to all other ministries, to all other ministries and departments, you know, virtual instructor instruction mode, because like, you know, bringing everyone, uh, bringing everyone into one platform is always difficult. Like you are all uh, located in different parts of Delhi. So it may, it may be difficult you know, to bring everyone into one location. So that is only the reason preferably like we are doing this, uh, you know, most of these awareness sessions and training programs and all in a virtual mode. So the objective of this, uh, you know, cyber awareness program is to, you know, uh, create awareness among the officers and uh, uh, employees and officials, you know, of the ministries and departments uh, to safeguard by uh, themselves uh, uh, from the cyber crimes which are happening. So in the form of organizing these awareness workshops, webinars, uh, webinars and interactive more, and we are also organizing the quiz programs where you can participate in the quiz. And you can just, uh, you know, check your knowledge, how far I am good in that particular uh, thing. So we were, we, were, we were all talking about like uh, secure your password, I have a strong password. So what do you mean by the strong password? Okay. And we are also telling you privacy and security options. So what are the privacy and security options? One should uh, set it. So those things like we were covering as part of our sessions, as well as we are also covering in the quiz, where you can check like how far you are there, right? So such kind of things and uh, uh, what are the best practices when someone is using email, when someone is uh, using the mobile, or someone is using the, uh, using the laptop, like what are the best practices someone should follow and some of the case studies wherever it is possible. Those case studies are also we are uh, trying to explain as part of this uh, session. So all the employees uh, and officers of all the ministries and its organizations, uh, this session is uh, you know, organized uh, as part of the Information Security Education Awareness, Pro uh, Awareness Project. So mainly this project is the, uh, there to generate the core research manpower in the country as well as training of the government officials on various uh, you know, uh, aspects so that they will be able to deliver their services in an effective manner. And we are also organizing these awareness workshops across the nationwide uh, by using the strength of these 50 institutions. So all these uh, institutions like including IAC, Bangalore, IITs and NITs, all these people are offering uh, cyber security courses uh, at a B.Tech level, M.Tech level, PhD and all, so that uh, we will get the uh, quality, uh, you know, uh, quality uh, software engineers like uh, with the proper certification and all. And we are also training the government officials on various aspects related to the 
uh, cyber security so that they will be able to deliver their services and effectively and they also will safeguard the organization's infrastructure kind of thing okay so this way all these 52 institutions are involved uh, in terms of producing the cyber security professionals and training the government officials and organizing the cyber awareness programs so for various stakeholders so that awareness like we were trying to do in two modes one is direct mode and another is indirect mode in the direct mode like by uh, way of organizing the workshops to various group of users and in indirect mode like we were using the print and electronic media and we are also using the simple infosec awareness dot in portal to reach as many uh, people as you know this infosec awareness dot in portal is containing a lot of information uh, in multilingual languages and it is also quiz and it is also have a lot of books related to the cyber security and all those things and you can you know uh, uh, when our time uh, yeah, uh, wherever you get the time so i request all of you please visit that portal and you can get more and more information with respect to the information security so that you can follow some of the best practices so that you can safeguard yourself and you can safeguard the organization as well as family also okay so that is how like we are trying to reach uh, the various stakeholders in various forms and this is the portal which i am talking about uh, uh, awareness dot in so this portal have okay you know uh, we were covering eight categories of different stakeholders like it starts from the children and ends with the system network administrator so all different categories of people we are trying to cover and the relevant information was kept in under each of the uh, you know uh, uh, under each of the category of the people so that you can access that information and try to improvise the you know cyber security knowledge so that you will be able to safeguard yourself as well as your family and organization thing right here like you will be having a lot of information at the end of the session i will discuss a few more things okay so let's get into the uh, today's topic as we all know like today like we are going to have uh, uh, prevention uh, of you know uh, uh, frauds from the uh, computers as well as you know cyber crimes so uh, to deal with the, uh, this uh, we have uh, dr gaurav gupta sir and he is a scientist at mit ministry of electronics and information technology government of india so let me give a brief introduction about about uh, uh, you know uh, dr gaurav gupta sir and uh, i think many of the people might aware like he is also published a book cyber un uh, you know cyber unsafe actually uh, we kept that uh, cyber unsafe only the session title and you know prevent uh, preventing from the computer frauds as well as uh, cyber crimes so that's the uh, subtitle of that uh, you know session right so gaurav gupta sir uh, is the first indian to earn the doctorate in the field of uh, digital forensics and he is bestowed with the young scientist award Uh, of the Indian Science Congress in 2010 by the man of science Dr APJ Abdul Kalam sir and Gaurav sir is one uh, uh, on a mission to create awareness about the technological frauds in the society and he has been a mentor and a guide to many research students and interns and he, he has a rich experience uh, which is 20 plus years of experience he has worked uh, you know in big four and served as a faculty member at Indraprastha Institute of Information Technology I uh, IIT Delhi and is currently additional director uh, with the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Government of India, and he has delivered over 150 plus talks, including the key notes, and published more than 60 plus technical or uh, and research papers. He has been instrumental in uh, hosting the international conferences in the area of digital forensics in India, and he serves as a vice chair at the IFIP Working Group. Uh, at 11.9 on a digital forensics uh, uh, digital forensics of international federation uh, uh, international uh, federation for the information processing uh, he is also an active researcher in the field and the gaurav sir has developed you know many state of art uh, and effective digital forensics solutions as i told you uh, sir is also an author of you know a cyber unsafe book So with this brief introduction, I request uh, uh, Sir to start the uh, session on you know uh, pre preventing uh, cyber frauds and cyber crimes. So let me uh, share the presentation, Sir. Thank you, thank you for the opportunity and good afternoon to one and all. Uh, today I will be talking about uh, cyber unsafe because we all are using digital technology. We are dependent on technology for carrying out our day to day activity. so since we are heavily dependent on uh, digital technology and uh, it's uh, uh, you know it impacts us big time 
there are people who misuse digital technology. There are people who try to exploit digital technology and that's where a lot of cyber incidents, cyber crimes happen and digital technology becomes cyber unsafe. So idea is how we can, uh, you know, how not to be the target of cyber criminals is the theme which I'm going to talk about. I will talk about how criminals do frauds, how they exploit things. Uh, and I will also discuss about, you know, how we can avoid becoming their targets. And that is the objective of the talk today. Uh, next, please. So before we move forward, you know, there are certain things which I put on the screen where you can you can think of your responses in these scenarios. For example, let's say if I ask you, what will you do if you lose your mobile phone? You know, you may you may look for it at various places. You might have, you know, in your office at home at friends place. You may go and report into police, uh, file an FIR. You may block it and so on. There are multiple things which you can do. So think what you want to do in your mind and then we will discuss later on. So, you know, let's say if somebody compromises your Gmail account, can you get it back? Let's say, let's say, you know, what are some basic digital etiquettes which we one should have? Let's say if I have to make a list of digital etiquettes, do I know what are those one, two, three, four, five, ten things which somebody needs to do? So what about free things which we get? We get a lot of free things in digital world. Are they actually free? So, you know, uh, you know, there are variables, there are IOTs devices, you know, we have, uh, we have, uh, you know, smart watches, we have, you know, smart gadgets. Are they safe? Are they leaking information? We have Google Homes of the world. We have Alexa's of the world and, you know, those kind of devices, home automation devices. So there is something known as side channel attack, you know, leaking information, some information which is leaking, which we are not aware. So do you know what are the devices which are leaking your information and how they are leaking it? Then we talk about, you know, human intelligence. You know, humans are intelligent. They are creative. Can this intelligence and uh, and this uh, creativity can also be misused? Can can criminals exploit that we are intelligent and do more frauds? So there are, you know, uh, so we will see going forward in this presentation and we will explore the answers of all these things. Right. So the obvious thing which comes to our mind is what makes cybercrime possible for criminals? Why are they able to do it? Is there a reason because of which the crimes are happening? The answer is it is all of us, the cyberspace users who are probably at times not fully aware, who are at times not careful enough while using digital technology, which enable cyber criminals to do fraud against us. So if we were careful, if we were aware, if we, if we take due precaution in digital world for a cyber criminal doing computer fraud and cyber crime is very, very difficult. It is because we let our guard down. That's where a lot of frauds are happening. And we will discuss how we can ensure that we are not putting our guard down. One more reason along with this is rapid speed of technology. You know, technology changes fast. Technology is also changing to provide you convenience. So let's say you know, 10 years back when you were going for a holiday, you were carrying a lot of digital technological devices in, in a standalone format. Like you had a digital camera for photos, you had a uh, uh, handy cam for recording videos. You had a Walkman kind of device to listen to the music. You had digital diary where you stored numbers and so on, right? But today, instead of all that, all those things have converged together into a single device, which is smartphone. And this is providing you convenience. You don't have to carry many devices. So this convenience and rapid change of technology, because technology used to change very slowly once upon a time, right? Uh, you know, my first phone lasted for five years. But I doubt anybody who is in the audience today will be having a five-year-old phone. We change our phones every year, six months, eight months, two years, one year. So technology is changing so very fast that security solutions and investigative solutions are not being able to be developed, keeping the pace with the change of technology. So this changing technology gives new problems, and that is what needs to be understood well. On top of it, criminals are also exploiting our emotions. How they're exploiting our emotions that I'll discuss because if you see, if you, we all were robots, you know, if we were all not humans and we all were robots and driven by some rules, you know, most of the cyber crimes will not happen. Crimes happen because we are human beings and humans have emotions and emotions like, uh, like, you know, there are multiple emotions which we talk about like trust, greed. Uh, can you move to next slide, please? So trust, greed, um, panic, fear of missing out threat, disruption, all these, all these basic emotions of the human beings are being exploited because you know what criminals do? They will pose that they are calling from a bank. They will, they will, they will uh, pretend that, you know, they are sending you a link for the payment. They will, they will exploit your greed by giving you that you have won lottery, you have inherited wealth, 
you have got an extremely lucrative deal. They will threaten you. They will play with your mind by creating panic that your SIM will be blocked in five minutes. Your credit card will be blocked in five minutes. And until you share these details with them, otherwise your card will be blocked in panic because you know nobody wants their phone to be switched off, uh, not to be reachable, right? So people become under that panic scenario or under the panic attack, they tend to do a lot of mistakes, right? They give you schemes where they will say that something is there only for five minutes, you will get 95% discount. You can get a very good holiday uh, in extremely lucrative price, but it is the deal is valid for two minutes. The idea is they don't want to give you time to think. The idea is they don't want you to consult and find out reviews of that particular website or going on to internet. Otherwise, you will know these are fraud. So, so that is what criminals do. They play with your mind. They play with your emotions, right? They, they, they use disruption as and when there is a change in our life, a big change which is happening at the society level, criminals exploit that. For example, when demonetization happened, spurious wallet related fraud started to happen because people are moving to digital wallets. When RFID tax became mandatory for toll plazas, you know, when the last date approached, Many people were not having fast track. So these criminals, they put up fake apps, fake URLs, fake websites, which were offering, uh, you know, cheap discounted fast tags and the real website was not to be reached very easily. So they were exploiting the fact that people were panicky. Last it was there. They wanted to get the solution and in the panic, in that disruption, they were not finding the right information and reaching to the wrong places. They were exploiting search engines to give their results, their websites as the highest and the highest ranked website so that people go for that. So today also if you search on Google, uh, let's say a part time job or a customer care number, all the five, seven uh, links which come as an ad are fraudulent. What happens is let's say if you want to book a helicopter service for some place, the first link which comes in the Google search result today is a fraudulent link, fraudulent link provided by an ad. And if you click on it, then they will you know, talk to you, they will give you an account number, they will ask you to make a payment, where once you make the payment, they will run away, right? So they, they do use technology well, they know how to bring one particular thing on the top of the results so that you can click on it. So these are the things which are some uh, which are happening today. So we need to know that we should not believe everything which is coming on the search result. We need to be very careful that customer care numbers are not mobile numbers. We need to make sure that we go to the website of the service provider to get their customer care number rather than from the Google search results, because these search results are prone to manipulation, right? So, so basically if we, if we see that somebody is trying to evoke our emotions and to rush us into doing some kind of digital transaction, that should be a red flag to us. That is a big red flag and we should avoid going for the transaction. We should look for the reviews on Google. We should look for and uh, talk to people about that particular place which is giving a lucrative deal because in most cases anything which is too good to be true is actually a trap next slide please so so you know for example let's say there are five websites on the screen can you answer in chat uh, according to you which one is fine which one is not fine please post your answer in chat out of these five websites which one is a uh, are all of them are fine or is one particular them is not fine what do you think Do you think all, all of them are okay? I hope people can post in chat. So if you see that, you know, according to me, out of these five, only the first one is the genuine website. First one is like Flipkart of Russia. It's a, it's a website, uh, uh, it's a legitimate website, shopping website of Russia. I have, you know, intentionally written this name because it looks uh, new to us and we think this is not right. All other four are fake. The second one is not yahoo.com, it is yah00.com because our eyes cannot differentiate between O and 0, 1 and I, the th third one is not SBI, it is SB1. The problem with the fourth one is very interesting. Our mind is intelligent and creative, it skips some of the information. We read it at ongc.co.in, whereas this is not ONGC, it is OGNC, the GNN has been replaced. Again, the last one is not Google, it is g00gle.com. So criminals use these kind of things that humans are intelligent, they will not be able to resolve O and 0, I and 1. They will miss some information like in O and GC, they will miss that the letters are interchanged. So these kind of things are being done to carry out phishing attacks, right? So if we see any numeral in a website name, typically it's a fraudulent website. Can you move on to next, please? So what happens is criminals are very smart. They keep on changing stories, uh, exploiting emotions. Only thing is stories will keep on changing. Emotions will remain the same. 
whatever they will do they will either exploit your trust or greed or panic or fear of missing out nothing else or disruption right so so we need to understand that if anybody is pushing us towards emotional and uh, exploiting our emotion we should uh, we should refrain from uh, going for those kind of transactions they are also using lot of technology they are using machine learning artificial intelligence and deep fakes to make synthetic audios videos and all sort of data so anything and everything in digital world can be counterfeited so in olden days we used to say whatever you see by your eyes or you hear by your ears are the only truth you must believe on but today that also is not true so aankho dekhi and kaano suni may not be true in today's world and we need to take everything with a pinch of salt in this digital world so if we see a photograph uh, where somebody is being defamed it might be a mock photograph so so that is something which is important to understand that technology can be misused uh, using deep fakes using synthetic uh, uh, you know uh, ai and ml kind of uh, technology which can make realistic synthetic audio video text and image all of them can be counterfeited next please we have seen in most cases we are treating symptoms rather than the root cause you know for investigation of any cyber security incident uh, we only try to find out some of the symptoms which we want to treat rather we need to understand the basics which is like you know for every effect there is a cause there can't be an effect without a cause right if you throw a stone in the water ripples will come so ripples are not without sending uh, throwing a stone similarly when whenever there is a fraud which is happening there must be a root cause to it and lokart principle which is a very famous principle for investigation tells us that every contact leaves a trace which means let's say somebody is making a counterfeit document let's say if i scan it sense change the name change the photograph and then try to make by printing a color print out i am trying to make a counterfeit uh, driving license here since i am using a printer to print and scanner to scan in the final printed counterfeit uh, driving license there will be noise there will be patterns there will be signature of the printer and the scanner which has been used in generation of it that means every contact leaves a trace the final print out came into contact of printer and printer's noise and fingerprint were found in that document right let's see if i'm talking to you let's see if somebody has to prove that i'm talking to you from my office camera you only need to take this video and this video will have some minute defects which are not visible to the naked eye but they are specific to a camera which is there in my office which is recording my video so since my video is coming to you through that particular camera that camera is in contact of me for processing the video the defects of the camera will be in the video and you can uniquely link that i have i was using a particular microphone and a particular video camera or a web camera right so any activity happening in digital world has its own signatures its own uh, artifacts which can be used by using the right set of technology to determine who has done it from which place he has done it which means you can investigate any cyber security incident and you can find out the hardware and the software and the machines used as well as probably the human being who is doing this kind of crime next please next slide please yeah so criminals are very very creative very lazy they use the same techniques over and over again until they become very very common and known to people and we can actually exploit this fact to develop solutions against that and that is what we are doing next slide please so you know as we discussed criminals are creative there are hundreds of creativity example which they display uh, in the in the traps which they lay for us to fall for right so we have seen that you know social media which we use uh, uh, is interesting and I, i will discuss these things you know how social media is creatively being misused how internet and gaming addiction is being done how free things are being used to lure us to the frauds um, as i discussed you know this person does not exist dot com this is a website which generates synthetic faces of people synthetic faces means those people do not exist on earth they are not the real people this program is have learned how human faces look like and now generating random artificial synthetic faces of the people who do not exist on earth now what criminals do they download these faces they make fake profiles on facebook and other social media and they send you a friend request and many people befriend them and then now if you investigate these people are not existent on earth those photographs can be used to take loans right and now if you want to investigate there is no person like that on earth how and against whom we will register a case right so there are many things which are happening in digital world and we will see those examples going forward next slide please so we have seen that social media has brought distant people closer like you know people whom we knew 20 years back and now, now they are somewhere far off in the world we can actually connect to them with through social media but then social media is also making our life different 
that we are not meeting people often uh, who are close to us. Rather, we are only spending time on screen and that is bad for our mental health. That is also something we need to understand that we need to be wary of that, you know, screen time, everything online can have mental uh, health issues. And that is a fact which is being acknowledged worldwide today. Next slide, please. So, so what can you see on the screen? Right, you know, we we have a perspective and cyber crime also are happening because of the perspective. Please type in chat. What can you see on the screen? Is this a puzzle? Are they blocks? What can you see? What is your perspective about what you can see on the screen? Please type in chat. Blocks, somebody saying blocks. Somebody saying left, which is right. Top view of a building. Yeah, so there are many interpretations, right? So what happens is until I tell you how to look at something, you may or may not be able to look at that particular thing, right? Uh, can you press the key, any key? Uh, move on to once. Yeah, now if you see, it says LIFT. If you see white characters inside over the black box, these are lift. So many people were not able to see lift initially. They were finding it as puzzle. But now, even if we remove lines, you will always be able to understand this is as lift. Reason is, you now know what is there. You know, your mind knows what to look for. Similarly, when I talk about cyber crimes, what happens is cyber criminals have a view, you know, modus operandi. And if that modus operandi is known to us, that let's say if a fraud has happened to a friend of mine, he tells me how the fraud was done. And if that fraudster tries to do fraud against me, now I know the story, those red flags. I know what not to do. I have done my learning. So it is very important to know what are the modus operandi of cyber criminals today. And if we have that perspective, it will become very difficult for cyber criminals to do fraud against us. So that is what the idea of this talk is that let's discuss modus operandi, let's discuss how to find out red flags and that will help us. Yeah, next please. So let me read it for you fast. Um, uh, it says, I could not believe that I could actually understand what I was reading using the incredible power of the human mind. According to the research at Cambridge University, it doesn't matter in what order the letters in a word are. The only important thing is that the first and the last letter be in the right place. The rest can be a total mess and you can still read it without a problem. This is because the human mind doesn't read every letter by itself, but the word as a whole. Amazing. Huh? And I always thought spelling was important. So if you, any one of you want to read it fast, you can always read it. But if you read it very slow and if a, a very young kid reads it who has just started to uh, learn reading, will find it very difficult to read. The reason is once you learn something, it becomes part of you. It becomes your motor movement. And then you skip a lot of information and you keep doing it. It's like driving. Once you first learn driving, you're stiff and you follow an algorithm. You press clutch, press put gear, release clutch and so on. But once you know driving, once you're experienced, it automatically happens, right? So that is where our intelligence is being used against us. Now, if you recall that website ognc.co.in, you know, our mind will actually read it to ONGC uh, 99 times out of 100 times because our mind is trained to ignore un un irrelevant information and apply intelligence to automatically correct things, right? Please, next slide, please. So now let's, you, you know, most people think social media is fun. I also think it is fun and we use it as activities, but then there could be pitfalls, right? So if I ask you whether social media is fun or not, it depends. It depends in the sense that if you're posting a photograph, you know, photograph along with the photographic information will also contain GPS location at times. It will contain kind of phone or the camera has been used whether it's an iPhone or an Android phone, it's a good quality phone or a bad quality phone and so on. So a lot of information is going inside that photograph, which can be misused. Let's say if I want to choose the target for an, uh, let's say ransom, right? If I want to kidnap somebody, I'll kidnap the person or the ward of a person who has an iPhone rather than this uh, Android phone, assuming person with an iPhone have higher capability of paying rent, right? So there are, there are a lot of information leakage which is happening on social media. If you're posting a comment, it is known to everybody. But let's say if you start to post a comment and did not post it and delete it, that also is saved by Facebook or other social media service providers. Their policy says whatever data they record about you can be used in any way, whatever way they want, and it is part of their terms and conditions, right? So we never think that, you know, once we started to type nasty comment and did not post it, how, how it can be misused? It can be. It is being stored in Facebook and many of the intelligence agencies, including US-based intelligence agencies, Visa providing, uh, services and job providing companies use this information to profile you. 
they will see what kind of thought process you have what kind of activities have you done what kind of comments you post that could be the basis to give you a visa to give you a job or for denying a visa or denying a job right and we never think while using social media that these could be the pitfalls right so it really depends on various factors let's see if i ask you what were you doing one year back or two year back exactly at uh, uh, 3 pm uh, in uh, june uh, uh, like uh, on the same date it is very difficult to recall most people will not be able to recall what they were doing exactly one year back or two year back but google because it is there always with you in terms of logged in your phone will have gps location records of where your phone was exactly one year back which means you were there let's say if you were in a restaurant and you ate something you took the photograph of the food it will be there in your google photos which means i if somebody gets access to your google account he can actually know what you ate which place you were how did how much money you paid because google pay will have that records and so on and you know all this information is being recorded by google and is available to be downloaded so next slide please if you go to uh, takeout.google.com uh, you will be surprised that it contains 5 to 10 gb or 12 gb of data about each one of us it contains all the search histories all the keywords we have searched payments we made photos we uploaded google drive documents gmail mails we have sent all those is there so you can go to this website after logging in and you can request to your data to be downloaded and you can download this data which is used data i think in case somebody else gets access to your account he can also download this data and can misuse it he can know about you your last 5 years what all have you done through this data this is a very sensitive data according to me so ideally what i do is i download this data from my account and then delete it from there so that if, even if somebody gets accidental access to my account he or she will not be able to misuse it so make it a practice that you download it every 2 months 3 months 1 month whatever frequency you wish and delete it from there to avoid potential misuse of it right so so we we must know what all can go wrong and this kind of services are there on all, all social media your linkedin to facebook to twitter everybody provides data to be downloaded by you and then you can delete it from there next please we think that okay you know these are an interesting area cyber crime investigation is a very lucrative area and we may be having a misconception that anybody can be made investigator anybody can learn answer is yes people can learn but they have to have some basic courses basic foundational knowledge let's say you have to have some some knowledge in computer science electronics and related areas then you need to read about it you need to do some 3 month 6 month course about it next slide please where you can learn the basics of how to do investigation which means bootstrapping is required then you need to constantly update and read about it i also have to read about it because technology is changing fast new crimes are happening new solutions are coming so this is an area where you need to constantly learn you need to know what is happening in commercial world and academic world and update your knowledge and yes in that case anybody can be made uh, uh, an investigator right this is an example of how an authority analysis works for example let's say i am visiting you and you go out for uh, to attend a personal call from your office meanwhile what i do is i sit on your machine from your logged email account i send an email to your boss which is threatening and abusing can you prove that you did not send it it is your mailbox which was logged in in your office your ip address it is very difficult to prove right but there is something known as authorship analysis which can be used to know the way you write the spellings you mistake you make like like if you see in the last line of all these four emails the regards in the first one is rgds whereas regards in the uh, second one on the right side is R, capital r and comma in the end whereas somebody may not be putting a comma somebody might be writing regards as r small or rgds so only one letter can be make lot of difference and if the mail is big 10 20 30 lines in that case there will be enough individualized feature of the person sending that email which can be identified using authorship analysis technique it's a completely scientific technique next slide please we think press delete and data is gone shift delete definitely gone or if we format and do repartitioning and reinstallation of everything data is gone what do you think if i do format and reinstallation and we i do the factory reset on the phone is data gone type in if i delete yes maybe so let me tell you a fact go to the next slide please data once created never goes data once created will remain always in storage media only thing is technology may or may not be available somebody may not be knowing how to do it so if you give me any piece of data any storage device even if it is broken partly i can recover 
So the last line is important. Recovery depends on capability, knowledge, skills, resources, and motivation. Right? If you overwrite 10 times, then also if I have a million dollar in one month and years, I can actually recover the data. If you give me a CD or a DVD which is broken in four parts, I can still get data back. If you do a factory reset of a phone, it so it might be a little difficult to recover data, but almost all 90 to 95% data in 90 to 95% cases can be recovered. And that is where if you sell your phone as a second hand phone or, or in the buyback, even after factory reset, information can be extracted and misused. Your photos, videos, credit card information, passwords, whatever was there on the phone can be misused. So what should you do? You can't let your second hand phone lying waste in the house. There are easier solutions. For example, you change your phone because of the battery problem or slowness. You format your phone, reinstall free softwares which can make your phone into a CCTV camera, which are available online. Then connect it to power, connect it to Wi-Fi router of your home, and your phone, second-hand phone, is now a CCTV camera working for you at your command. That's a better usage than giving it out where somebody can recover data and misuse it. Right? So there are always non-technical, easier solutions which we can do and safeguard us. Next slide, please. So, so piece of advice to you is never create a piece of electronic data, video, audio, or text, which you do not want to retain forever because it will come and come back and haunt you. I've seen cases where people come back to me saying, I shared a uh, video or a uh, photograph in good faith. Now somebody is blackmailing me or threatening me. What should I do? Right? People also make synthetic videos, morph videos. That is also the case. But at the very first, anything which can be misused against you, my advice is do not create that piece of text or video or audio or image. Next, please. So date and timestamps, you know, date and timestamp about digital data are very important uh, aspects. They also can be tempered. Next, please. And tempering is not very difficult. There are GUI based, uh, API based tools. Next, please. And which can be used to, you know, change anything and everything. If you see in this slide, uh, it shows a date and timestamp where it says the file has been modified in 2001 while it is being created in 2003. Can it be possible? Can I modify a file which is not, which is yet to be created? So these kind of problems pose problems when the court case goes to the court of law. Criminals do that intentionally so that if they are caught, they will dispute in court saying this is this is not true. This is a fake data. Somebody is manipulating. We must know this is possible, how it happens. File system allows you to do these kind of things. And there are tools, next slide please, which can be used to temper data. Right? If you see here, I can check creation date and whatever I want to set, I can set using API based tools. So if I know that these can be done, I can explain in court of law that this is not fake, this is not manipulated, this is possible because of the technology. Next, please. Next slide, yeah. So we think criminals are techo geeks. Actually not. People uh, who do not know a lot about computer, who use computers and who has malicious intentions can do frauds very easily. They can download tools, they can run attacks. There are enough help available on Google and various search engines and uh, on internet which can be used to launch attacks today. Only thing is these people who are not uh, geeks, who are normal people who know a little about computer, they can launch an attack, but they don't know they can be caught very easily. Whatever action they will do, the, the, the trail, the traces, the fingerprints which they are leaving of their activities can be identified, extracted, and then they can be linked back to the person who has done those crimes. Right. So there are a lot of uh, interesting ways of doing frauds like social engineering, design flaws, key loggers. All of these are being used by criminals. I will discuss one of them like design. So this is a screenshot of 2009 where, you know, this is Gmail in 2009. Uh, now they have updated. I reported to them. Then what I used to do in that case is I used to say I forgot my I cannot access my account. Next, please. I used to go to this. I forgot my password option. Next, please. And in that, I used to type any email ID. For example, Gaurav.Gupta. It's a valid email ID in 2009, right? Or I can say Gaurav.Varma, Gaurav.Sharma, Gaurav.Kumar, and so on. I used to take random email IDs and then used to say submit. Once I submit, it used to ask me a question because at that point of time, phone numbers and secondary email IDs were not linked. They were not very common. SMS never used to come because, you know, that was not popular way. Not everybody had it. So, the difference between Gmail and all other service provider like Yahoo and Rediff was, Rediff and Yahoo were asking date of birth or PIN code or something. For a random person whom I don't know, let's say Gaurav Kumar, I don't know who the Gaurav Kumar is, I will not know his date of birth. But Google being Google, it was not asking, that was their bad design. And in this case, if I want to answer favorite color question, I have to try red, white, blue, green, any color I will start, right? It was giving me unlimited number of attempts. 
only thing is in the wrong attempts it will ask captcha so i used to write colors and you know in most cases out of 100 email ids i used to try 10 to 12 i used to reach to a place where i used to answer the question correctly next please and i used to reach to a point where i could reset them and if i reset this password now that person is logged out from his account i can actually know what he was doing by accessing his email account right so i never resetted anybody's password but i could generate 100 or 2 uh, 1000 to 2000 email ids in which this kind of problems were there so what is the problem now can you go back one slide back yeah so if you see here the problem is no 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 so one slide only where the question is asked favorite question favorite color yeah so let's say if this is the question users are so honest they were answering it correctly people were writing blue pink red whatever their favorite color are right and then you know one more question which was there which was like what is my father's middle name the answer is kumar most of the time it is right so problem is as a user what can you do as a user i never answer my my secret question correctly i give a uncorrelated answer so that nobody can guess it so for this particular question let's say if it is favorite color my answer will be telephone telephone is not a color nobody can guess it right so you, as a user a piece of advice is do not give correlated correct answers because you know sometime question is what is your first car most people know what is your first car many people will be knowing about it so always answer put choose an answer of your favorite you know the question secret question which is not at all related which is which can't be guessed next please next slide yeah we think it is difficult to do identity thefts identity theft we know are like you know somebody is using a skimmer to clone your card and so on but then you know if i classify these document these fraud into multiple categories somebody is using your identity like your id cards like aadhar pan whenever you are getting them photocopied be cautious if you give your you know let's say if you go to a photocopier to get five copy of your pan card he might be doing six copies giving you five keeping one which he can misuse or he can give to criminals right so ensure your documents are not going in the wrong hands only give it to the right person in the bank branches don't give it to the agents because they make extra copies then then comes our credit cards debit cards whenever you are making payment people might be secretly recording using phones so you might be very careful in swiping your card in front of you on the point of sale device but there might be a camera on a video recording mode which might be recording your card and the person swiping your card will swipe your card and then give it back while returning it in terms of while flipping it so both side of the card has been recorded by a camera or a phone which is on video mode and once they capture both side of your card they can actually do transaction and you must be wondering without otp how will they do it but for international transaction you don't require otp and many people have not disabled their international transaction by going on to their uh, net banking of the card so there are two things you can do here cancel and stop your net uh, while going into your net banking international transactions as well as remove cvv number from the back of your card which nobody does once cvv number has been removed it is very difficult to do a fraud right next please so so there are lot of frauds which are happening around uh, you know uh, uh, your identity thefts cards documents and all those things right your profiles are being made fake i can make i can download your photo from your profile then i can open a facebook page in your name and can send request to all of your friends and some people will fall for it because they are seeing your photograph so you must know these kind of problems happen we must know that you can go to you all these websites all these service provider have report abuse section let's say if there is a profile which is having your photo but not belonging to you you can actually report abuse and they will take action right you can complain to cybercrime.gov.in uh, for any financial transaction you can call 1930 as soon as the financial fraud happens so that your money can be stopped wherever it is with, before a criminal can withdraw it from the system so we must know all these things and keep this information handy and spread the word so that many people know about these kind of things next please this we can skip i think in the interest of time yeah next so internet and online gaming addiction this is becoming a problem in today's generation next please so you know young ones they are using internet they are they are using they are playing games like pubg which are addictive they are spending many many hours on these kind of devices uh they are spending time on facebook tiktok reels they are making you know taking photos and videos at dangerous location to gain gain more likes so we must be very conscious that technology should not be dictating terms to us technology should be used as a tool no, it should not become our master so if technology becomes intrusive if we cannot live without technology then that's a problem 
So we need to make sure that our notifications on the phones, unnecessary notifications are switched off because what will happen is notification will disturb you every now and then, right? Only the important notification should be on. We should practice digital detox. We should keep away our phone for a while and that should be done because that will help our mental health and physical well-being. Otherwise, too much of usage of technology will help, you know, have bad impact. For example, if you always use maps for those places also where you know the way, your direction sense will lose, right? You know, I have seen that if I rely on autocorrect, so my spellings are not getting corrected. I do the same spell mistake every now and then because Google as well as the Microsoft Word corrects it automatically. So if you do not use your skills, slowly you will lose them. I don't remember four or five phone numbers. Once upon a time, I knew 10, 20 phone numbers. But since I can store numbers, I am losing my tendency to remember the numbers, right? So the idea is digital technology is something which is important, but then it should not become problem and cause mental health issues if we are over dependent on it. Next, please. Next slide. So in today's world, survival of the most aware is the mantra. You know, if you are not aware, then frauds will happen. If you are aware, if we read about how criminals do fraud, we will be safeguarded. For example, UPI frauds are happening. Uh, you know, one letter here and there in extra, like, you know, we had PM care at SBI and PM cares at SBI. One letter difference can make that, you know, money will go to the wrong person. Let's say we are selling and buying something on OLX. We have seen that a lot of people send QR codes, a lot of criminals send QR code requesting for money where in, in, in guise of saying that we are paying money to you. So you must remember that for receiving money, you don't have to do anything. Person who is sending the money has to do all the thing. So that is some very basic information which at times we don't care and you know we ignore and we fall for it, right? So the idea is criminal will play psychological tricks. They will have stories. They will push you hard. And we must be very careful if somebody is pushing us to do something in a very less amount of time, highly likely this is a fraudulent thing. Any genuine uh, service provider will not push you hard. Next, please. So we think free is good or free is bad. What do you think? Is free good or free bad? Type in chat. So anything and everything which is free is actually taking something from you. If they're if you're not paying for the product, you are the product. Your information is the product. Your information is being sold. Next, please. They 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 use free to lure you. Right? It's like they will give you one month free for Netflix or LinkedIn, and then you will subscribe. You will give your card, and they, it will auto renew. They will know how to get money from you. Juice jacking is when you connect to uh, uh, public uh, charging stations to charge your phone. Let's say you are traveling to airport or in a public place, your phone is dead. You connect to those uh, charging stations and those charging stations actually can install viruses. They can steal data. They can put a ransomware on your phone and do a lot of nasty things. Solution, very simple solution. You know, whenever I have to charge my phone, I charge my power bank. Because power bank is a dumb device, nothing, no virus can be installed on a power bank. And then from power bank, I charge my phone. Even if I don't have a power bank, I switch off my phone to charge because switched off phone, it's very difficult to install anything in a switched off phone. But most people, they want to remain live while charging. And that is what causes a lot of issues. Either charge with your cables and your set or else put your phone on switch off mode or else better is charge from power bank. Lost and found USBs. You might have found USBs or pen drives. They are not accidental, they are intentional. Let's say if I'm a criminal, I will install Trojan or a virus or a malware or a ransomware on a pen drive and throw it in the parking of a shopping mall near to the people's car, thinking that if they will pick up, let's say it's a Honda City car, I'll throw it there. If it's a very poor car, I will not probably throw there. So if idea is if somebody wealthy who has a good car, he picks up the uh, device and plugs into his computer, office computer or personal computer, I can infect it through ransomware and I can ask for ransom. So never plug any free USB device which you find anywhere and everywhere or if given to you in a conference, they might be containing malicious softwares. Next, please. Hardware keyloggers, they are an even bigger problem. You know what happens is, let's say if I come and visit you in your office and you go out for your uh, washroom or for a call for a second, I can connect a small tiny device at the back of your computer where a keyboard is connected. So now your keyboard will be connected to the CPU through this small pen drive like device, which is actually a hardware keylogger. And you cannot find any hardware keylogger through an antivirus or a software. You have to physically inspect back of your CPU, which nobody does. So these are some very simple things which mostly ignored. So while doing audit or organization of your offices, you must check backside of your CPU 
to look for any extra device which is connected there, which could be a hardware keylogger. Next, please. So prevention is better than cure is also applicable in the digital world. The idea of today's talk is to help you understand that you can do take a lot of precautions and you can prevent a lot of frauds from happening only by being digitally aware, only by knowing the modus operandi of the cyber criminals. And that is not very difficult to do. The solutions are not very difficult to do, right? We practice hygiene, we wear mask, we take uh, sanitizer wherever we go. And similar kind of strategy we need to apply in digital world also. Next, please. So once upon a time, it was the case that you were wealthier, you were immune to the crime because you could buy people to protect you. But today, cyber crime has tipped it other way because if you are wealthy, if you have more uh, number of digital devices and digital footprints, more chance that somebody will compromise the digital footprint and some of the device and get back to you and try to take away your data, your money, your reputation and so on. So we need to be very, very careful. Next, please. So this is the book I have authored, uh, Cyber Unsafe. Uh, you know, a lot of things which I've discussed are part of the book. This is a storybook uh, where I have given out non-technical solutions and uh, it might be there in some of the libraries uh, of your organization and you can refer the book for more information related to how to avoid cybercrime from your libraries. Next, please. Thank you. And uh, if you have questions, I am open to answering the questions. Any scenario which you would like to discuss, uh, you can contact me on mail in case you need more information. I'll also post the LinkedIn detail of mine so that uh, you can connect me uh, uh, with me on LinkedIn, where also I keep on posting updates about cyber crime related solutions and uh, latest news. I'm open to questions. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your wonderful and enlightening session. I think there are a lot of questions which are you know there in the chat area. So I request uh, participants, if you have any questions, kindly keep it in the chat area so that uh, we will try to address uh, all the queries. So let me take uh, one more question. Uh, yeah. Uh, sir, while downloading any app, they are asking for permissions like files, media, camera, phone, uh, yes. uh, phone, etc. How do we avoid this? So there are two things. See, uh, many apps will not install until you give permission. So you give the permission, install them, and then go to the permission manager and disable the permission which you don't want them to use. You give them permission only for that particular duration when you have to use it uh, because they will not work, but then disable and remove the permissions from the permission manager by going into the settings. And that is the best way to use them. All right, sir. Uh, there is one more question from uh, Mr. Vivek Vishal. iPhone, uh, is that case is safer? As we know, uh, that is uh, uh, that is completely encrypted and they did not give encryption even to FBI of terrorists. Okay. But, Maybe yeah. that is why the PM and other high profile uh, users use it. So this is true that, you know, they do not share a lot of data with others, but they do use it for themselves. So, so, you know, what happens is Google phones or Android phones are cheaper. You don't pay for the device. But you, your data is being sold in turn, whereas you pay premium to Apple and hence it does not send, sell all these things to the third party. But vulnerabilities can exist in both of them. And it is known like, you know, some of the uh, some of the vulnerabilities were found in iOS also, which can also be exploited by criminals. So everything is safe and, and nothing is safe in digital world. You need to take precaution. That is how I think we should proceed. So it's like, you know, I don't create anything which even if leaked can be misused. And that is the best way to be safe. Okay, sir. I think uh, there is one more question. We need to wipe it out completely, sir. I think th th this is with respect to the data on mobile or whatever it is, sir. See, nothing can be wiped out completely. For example, if you see, uh, once the fingerprints were developed in 1800 something, you know, people were doing crimes uh, by wearing gloves, but they were not knowing that, you know, that because DNA was not there. 50 years later, DNA was discovered. In the, inside the gloves, hair and the sweat can be used for finding out who you were. Right. So today you may wipe using technology. So I know a person who is buying old hard, hard disk and mobile phones where everything has been wiped out. Why he's buying it? He knows that after five years or 10 years, once quantum computing and quantum technology is there, he can develop solution which can be used to recover this data. He is buying encrypted hard drives also. Let's see, you have a, a, data, a hard drive which is encrypted data is there. He will buy it if you have uh, discarded it because you cannot break encryption today. But after five years, I can actually break encryption. So your data, let's say a person's lifetime is 60 years. Let's say my hard disk, if I sell today, 
and then after 10 years it can be decrypted i am still alive the data can still be misused right so best is to make sure do not generate anything which can be used against you okay yes sir and this two factor authentication is safe so two factor authentication is relatively safe but nothing is foolproof right for example uh, if let's say you are driving and you are having google map on your phone is not locked and i let's say if your window pane is lowered if i snatch your phone i get access to your phone i get access to your gmail i can change phone number i can change security question i can change two factor authentication also because phone is with me and now it is difficult for you to get back to your account but there is a solution for example google allows you to download offline codes if you go to settings and download offline codes even if somebody compromises your google account you can still log in using these one time logging logable offline codes which i recommend highly you to download today itself from your google account so that in case is compromised till you can log in and can uh, reclaim your account okay sir. great sir uh, is antivirus uh, uh, necessary for windows 11 so see antivirus is one more layer of security it is not a full proof layer of security it does not know signature of all so if your behavior the browsing behavior or your contact and digital behavior is safe then antivirus may not help you much but if you are going to website which you should not go you are downloading things from from torrent and other places then antivirus will definitely help in terms of protecting from the known viruses great sir and one more question from nandan singh sir and he is asking if the, if the data is not deleted permanently from the device what should be done see if device hardware is with you then it is safe if it goes out of your hand people will try all the ways to get data back so i will suggest i don't give out my devices outside uh, and i keep them for very very long period best way to destroy is there are some service providers who give you uh, you know digital shredding kind of solutions that is one or else you yourself let's say you you get it melted you convert into a different form then data cannot be recovered although it is assumed that that you know the debris of the spaceship uh, in which kalpana chavla was coming back they got a partly melted hard drive and they could recover 90% of data that's great so kindly share the ppt it will be uh, very helpful i think someone is asking sir and uh, so many other people are asking ppt as well as recording of the video so like recording of the video in youtube you can access from our channel sir kindly share the ppt it will be helpful so what is the major role of antivirus program in a cyber security so as i told you antivirus we have discussed right so maybe we can move on to next question and i can see duck duck go somebody is asking duck duck go is a as, you know search engine which give, which does not record data about you it is recording less data about you and that is uh, that is actually good but there is no service provider which does not record anything okay sir how to safeguard from a cyber terrorism see cyber terrorism i am sure government and the and the agency is responsible for it are working on these kind of things there are laws there are solutions uh you know we have indian cert uh, computer emergency response team we have nci ipc it is the mandate of that i think as a user we should do we should stick to the good internet and uh, digital etiquettes and that is the best we can do to help government and these agencies great sir and sir one of the question is my aadhar card is shared with someone uh, some people in whatsapp what precaution should i take now uh see once shared nothing can be done about it but we need to understand that whatever we are sharing we should only share with the people who are actually going to process it for example if i have to share it with bank i will take a print right on to the it uh, saying that if this is shared for this particular purpose and directly submit in the bank not to the agent so if you are giving out on whatsapp i am sure people can make n number of copies and misuse is possible i am sure you can't change it but then you know uh, you delete it from whatsapp if there is an option to delete for everyone use it or find out the person to whom you have sent and request him not to share or you know you can also file a complaint if that person is going to misuse it there are possibilities that you can file a misuse complaint then also there is one important thing sometimes these documents are used to take fake sims on your name so there is a service by dot uh, ceir if you search you can actually go and check how many sims are there on one particular aadhar of yours and you can disable those sims which have been taken on your aadhar which you are actually not using okay sir if i connect an iphone to a computer and select don't trust this computer can the data be uh, transferred in this case so as i told you all these things work only for the known things there might be unknown vulnerabilities and you don't know what they might be doing so 
So answer is nobody knows. <laughs> okay, sir. And uh, uh, which is the safest UPI to do payments like GPay, B, Paytm, Airtel? See, all these companies are taking due precautions. Most of the UPI frauds are happening because of the user's ignorance. You must know that paying only you need to scan QR codes where you're scanning the QR code for any payment, show it to the person who is about to receive the money before making the transaction so that if there is a fake QR code or fake information, it is verified. So do not put your pin until everything is verified by the person who is going to receive money. And if you are the one to receive money, don't you don't have to do any action. It should happen automatically. Oh, that's great, sir. Can you suggest some precautions while using social media? As I told you, do not post. So you, there is something known as EXIF data, E-X-I-F. So there are tools which can remove this information. So whenever I am posting a photograph on social media, I'm using EXIF uh, data remover tool to remove all the information like GPS, kind 